Hello everybody, welcome back to part 3 of the tutorial. Now, you might be wondering why the code looks slightly different. Well, it's kind of a long story. I started out and I recorded the tutorial, but with no audio. And then I didn't do anything for two weeks and I forgot what I was doing. So, I had to revert the entire project to an earlier state as best as I could. And now I'm going to go through the tutorial as best I can with what I have. So if you see any inconsistencies, just go to this code. It's probably only a few blocks if there's stuff that's changed, but the real math behind it, I'm going to try to explain everything right here. Okay, so the first thing we do is we go to our touching um, function right here. And what we do in this is we set um, the variable called collision counter to zero. If you're coming from part two, you probably need to create this variable. So then we're going to set touching to false. This variable is the variable that tells us if we're touching something or not, because we don't have a return in Scratch. We have to output it via a variable. So now we're going to go through every single line that's in the current level. So we're going to go through length of collision list and then divide it by four because you need four coordinates for each line. So you don't want to go over every line four times. And then of course we're just going to change the collision counter by four each time because we go from the first cycle, which is zero, and then to four, and then etc, etc, etc. And for here, we're just going to do a simple inside the box. So the math of detecting a line is essentially like this. So if it's something's in a box, it has to be less than the right side, greater than the left side, less than the upper side, and greater than the lower side. And if that's true, then it's inside the rectangle. So that's all we need to do right here. All you do is for if statements, and you can make them like this. Um, less than, greater than, then less than, greater than. And then we're going to do these items, and then I'm gonna explain it. So let's do. Okay, so now we have our full touching function. Now, I have all these values here because we need to gather the x coordinates um, of the line and the y coordinates of the line. So, this is the first x coordinate because the collision counter starts out at 4 and then 4 take away 3 is 1. So, it's item 1 of collision list. Then, this is the second x value, this is the first y value. Actually, this is the second y value. This is the first y value. So now, if you run this, and just make sure all this code is correct, because we have this here. Let's just check that, and here, and then right there. Okay, but if you run the code now, your character should now stop correctly on the line. Now, this is pretty cool, because because now we kind of have a real platformer because we can just jump around now. So there probably are still a few bugs. So one common one that I usually have is my platforming engine always sticks to the ceiling. But an even more common one is if you go off the platform and, and you can still jump. So we can easily correct this by just checking if the SY is less is um, greater than negative one. Um, that's why. Okay. And if it's greater than negative, or actually negative two is a better value. And if it's greater than negative two, then we can't jump. Because once we fall off the platform, you can see that our, well, let me show that quickly. But our SY quickly gets quite up there. Is it it, um, um, it gets larger as we fall faster. So now we're going to test 
um, placing our drawing. Let's try some horizontal lines. So let's just do negative 100 to negative 100. Um, and then negative 50. Okay. Now, that's a problem, see? So what's happening here is that it's doing our touch Y script when I hit the block instead of our touch X script. So what's happening is we're never moving out of the X blocks. And that's because our collision list is one before. Okay, that's what I was suspecting. So right here, if you see, there's a little bit of a jumping in the character when it runs against the wall. We do definitely do not want this because it looks makes the game look amateur. But what's actually happening here is it's like almost a floating point error. Because when Scratch draws the positions, it can only draw to the pixel. But if we look at our SX, or actually our X position, it's quite a strange um, float value. So how we can fix this is when we draw the player, um, where is our input? There we go. Okay. When we draw our player, we're going to, going to want to draw it at a rounded value. So in this case, it would be floor of um, player X. Now if we look, it doesn't hit it because even though this value is changing, um, the drawing position is staying constant, so it's not jumping back and forth anymore. So, now we have a quite a little dandy little platformer, and we could de design some levels, but I want to get to something else quickly first. Now, a lot of games have backgrounds, and we can um, control that right within our script right here. So let's just make um, a block called background and just make that run without screen refresh. And just inside it, just go to zero, zero, set the pen size to 1000, um, set pen color to whatever you want the background to be, and then pen down, and then pen, actually pen up first, and then pen down, and then pen up. So. Now, if we place that in our our drawing part, oops, I drew that over everything else. So we will not be able to see anything here, and that's because of two small errors. One is you have to set the pen size back to the correct value, and the other one is that our pen color has now switched to our background color. So we're gonna wanna switch that back to our thing. And let's just move that to a more opportune place, which would be our draw line from x, y to x, two. So now we have kind of an ugly background color, so let me, let's switch to that. Um, I think a nice. Okay, so now our game is more stylized. And right now we can just disable all the, var all the variables. So that's pretty much the end of this episode because we have a mostly working platformer. And there are, there are a few cases I'm going to cover in the next episode. And that's going to be one, fall, dying when you fall off, two, making obstacles that you can do, and maybe adding some more effects and stuff. I also would like to add like a scrolling background maybe, and also show how to convert this into a scrolling platform if you want to, or just keep the camera at the same. Because, it turn as it turns out, it's really easy to make this a scrolling platformer. All you have to do is move one or two blocks, and then the whole camera can move with the player. So, we'll tackle that in the next episode. For now, that's me out.